Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to determine the output of a function machine. So a function machine is a machine wherein it produces only one single unique output. Otherwise, if we drop in an input here and this machine processes it and it produces two outputs or three outputs or more than two outputs, then this machine is not a function because the definition of function is that for every input it has to have only one unique single output so let's go over this problem here so how do we evaluate or how do we um, determine the output of a function machine so it's pretty much like um, evaluating function so in this problem that we have here we are dropping negative 7 into the machine so looking at this machine that we have here the negative 7 will be multiplied by 2 and will be added by 3 we can actually show the work on the side here so that would be uh, this is the this is what's going on inside the machine so we have 2 and then the um, I'll give you a trick in order that you can determine the output like correctly. So it's like um, evaluating a function. What are you going to do is whatever the variable inside the machine, change it into a parenthesis before you plug in the input. Again, change the variable into a parenthesis first because if you don't change it into a parenthesis, uh, you're going to mess up with the negatives and negatives when you do the arithmetic later on in some of the problems. So change the variable into a parenthesis and after you did that, that's the time that you plug in whatever the input is. So the input that we have here is negative 7. So um, so this is what's going to happen. We multiply these two together. So that's negative 14 plus 3. So pretty much the output that we're going to have here would be negative 11. So therefore, this machine is a function machine because it has only give, it has only produced a one unique output, which is negative 11. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try these two problems out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, the trick is we evaluate it in such a way that we change this variable into a parenthesis before we put in the input into that parenthesis that we have created. So inside the machine, this is what's going on. So we have a parenthesis and then squared minus 12. So then we have um, the input was 3. So inside the parenthesis would be 3. So then uh, 3 squared would be 9. 9 minus 12 is a negative 3. So the output for this setup would be negative 3. And this is a function because we have a unique single output, which is negative 3. We go over this problem here. So um, again, pretty much the same thing. Um, uh, first, we are going to change the variable into a parenthesis. So that would be a negative parenthesis. Di I mean, that's divided by 2 minus 1. So now you see the importance of writing it in parentheses first. Because once we put in the negative 14, we're going to put the negative 14 over here because that's uh, that's the input. So pretty much we have negative of a negative will turn into a positive. So that would come out positive 14 divided by 2 minus 1. So this is where uh, changing the variable into a parenthesis would play a role in coming up with the correct answer when we do the arithmetic. So we can just uh, divide these two here. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. So the output for this machine is 6. And it is then a function because we have a unique single output. Did you get negative 3 and 6 for the answers to this problem here? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example right here. So we have a input of 5 and it has to process. This is the uh, function machine here. So again, it's pretty much the same as what we did in the first three examples. The trick is to change the letter or the variable into a parenthesis before you put the input in. So this would be negative of the absolute value of negative 3. I put the parenthesis 
Again, inside the parentheses, we put in the input that's a five. So then I can go ahead and just do the arithmetic here. So this would be negative of the absolute value of negative three times five is a negative 15. And so from here we have Absolute value of negative 15 is a positive 15, but we have a negative outside of the absolute value. So that means this is a negative of uh, 15, which is positive because the absolute value of um, negative 15 is 15. So pretty much the output here is negative 15. And again, this is a function because it only produces one unique single output. Now we go over this problem here. So I'm gonna take, uh, we're gonna take this together. So uh, what's going on here is that there are two machines stacked up on top of each other and we determine the final output after the uh, input has been processed by these two machines here. So pretty much the same thing. First we have, um, Whatever is the whatever is the variable, we change it into a parentheses first, and then we plug in whatever the input is. The input that we have here is a negative five, so I put it in there. Now, here's the thing. Now, you see, if you have a negative five, if you don't put it in parentheses, then you might think that it was a negative 25, but it's that's not the case, because a negative five times negative five is a positive 25. So again, the trick is, change the letter or the variable into a parenthesis first before you put in the input and you do the arithmetic. So that is a positive 25 minus 10 is 15. So this uh, 15 that we have here will come out of the first machine. That would be the um, output of the first machine. And this 15 will go into the second machine. So this will become an input of the second machine here. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna put a, um, a division here. So what are we gonna do in this machine is that, that would be a negative of a parenthesis over five, and then that's a minus uh, two. So again, the input right now is not anymore negative five because uh, the first machine processed it already and it was 15, so that's the one that will go into this machine here. So we're, we can put in 15 here. So I'm gonna put 15, and so that's a negative of a positive 15 is a negative 15 divided by five minus two, so that's a negative three minus two, so the final output that we have here is a negative five. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own, and when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So again, um, our input was a positive five and it will go through the first machine and whatever the result here will come out of the first machine as an output, but will become an input of the second machine to get the final output. So it's the same thing as what we did with the problem that we have over there. So first we are going to change the, uh, change the, uh, variable into a parenthesis first before we do the um, arithmetic. So I can go ahead and write a bracket for this and so the, uh, the x here will become a parenthesis minus two and then this is supposed to be uh, squared. So right here we can put the five so five was the input, so it's gonna, it's gonna replace the x here. So five minus two is three. So I can go ahead and have um, three here, and then that's a squared. So pretty much it becomes a nine, three squared is nine. So this is the output of the first machine. So nine is gonna come, um, come out of the first machine and it will become an input for the second machine here. So it's gonna go into the second machine. So um, this is what's going on in the second machine here. So we have nine as an input, not anymore the five. So um, I'm gonna put a division here so we don't get uh, confused with the uh, two processes here. So we have negative of the absolute value of four. Again, remember we are going to change the letter or variable into a parenthesis first before we put in the input. In here, our input was nine, so we put in the nine there. So that would be the um, negative of the absolute value of four times nine is 36. And so the absolute value of negative 36 is 
negative 36. So this is the final output that we have here. So negative 36. So the negative 5 was processed and the output was 9. And then after that, it was processed again by the second machine and the final output was negative 36. In the last two problems that we have here, this machine is a function because it's only producing one unique output. And at the same time, this machine is also a function because it's producing only one unique output. Same thing for this. This first machine that we have here is a function because it's only producing one unique output, nine. And this machine is also a function because it's producing only one unique output. So pretty much in this, the last two problems that we have here, we actually have two function machines that are stacked up on top of each other. Did you get the same answer as this? Good, perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.